I want to show you some profile cuts here of some wheels. We're going to do a burn test of about maybe three or four wheels, or rims, should I say, to just check the layup schedule. I'm going to show you some photos now of a burn test of this rim here. We do these at the factory <clears throat> all the time. Uh, and I've checked a lot of different layups of other wheels over the years by doing this method. Um, so you can see in the photos there, it's a burnt rim, whereas the carbon is formed at 3000 degrees. So it doesn't burn, but the resin burns out. That allows you to just pick apart each layer of the carbon and see the exact layup schedule of each wheel you want to look at. So that's the Scope Artec 6A we're gonna test. That's one of the reserves there. Um, that's one of a, um, sorry, a gravel wheel. You can see how much wider it is than these wheels here. It's another wide wheel. This is one. So we've just done a burn test of a Scope Artec 6 rim. So cut a section off the end of the rim, which was this piece here, and just pulled apart all the layout. The key thing we're trying to find out was the layout of the outer layer, whether it went over into the hook valley section of the rim. It doesn't. It stops at the top here and there's no overlap of fibre into the valley. Um, that, that, that is pretty normal with a lot of uh, rims but this is obviously a different factory than they're at before because it used to do that uh, so yeah I'm not sure exactly which factory that is now but it's definitely a different layup schedule um, than it was previously um, everything's pretty normal uh, nothing out of the ordinary that's sort of the key differentiator and one of the reasons why there was that big company recently that had the side blowing off. Not that it's happening to these, but you want that fibre to continuously go over the edge, which also helps impact resistance on that section. But um, yeah, there's one of them pulled apart for you. Um, you can see, so this is a, um, a failed rim, so it's not a, uh, a rim that's finished. We just laser etched one of the new test logos on here to see how that works, um, but you'll see the layout schedule. Um, there's a lot of, when you do a new mold, this is a new mold, you do a lot of uh, rims through the mold. It's a bit like making pancakes, you never get your first one right. There's a lot of wheels that get, they're easily rideable, they'd be fine to ride, but you, you cut them up and you test them and you get it perfect. You get the resin carbon ratio exact, you get the compaction exact, um, you don't have any instability in the mold, you don't have any surface variation etc so yeah the video will be cool i'll just burn a heap of rims and then i'll pick the layers off the main thing i want to show you is how we get the layer on my rim up and over the hook the unidirectional in one piece over and down into the valley that's the key difference if you have it's a bit like a grain of wood or block of wood if you've got the block of wood and then you hit with an axe it'll split the wood open um whereas here if, oh, if you put the block of wood on its side and you hit it, bang, it won't split the wood. You only hit it on the end of the grain. So if you've got fibres coming up at 45 degrees, which they do in a normal wheel, and you hit it on the end, that's like you're hitting down the grain. The moment that grain folds over, you're hitting the grain on the side. And that's a massive difference to impact resistance and the ability for the hook to blow out the hook. There's been a lot of videos recently, um, one of the big US brands, I think Peak Talk did one where he spoke about the air going into the rim and not having a relief hole for water ingress or air and that causing the blow off. Um, you might be right, but I'm, I'm pretty sure what's happening and I'll, I mean, I'll do a test actually, I'll shoot a heap of air in there from a wheel, I'll puncture it right through and just pull it out and let all the air shoot in and see if it blows off which I've done that for, it doesn't do it. What's happening is with those wheels is they're burping and the mass release of air, you burp it this way and the air follows path of least resistance and actually pushes the tire back and then escapes out the side and that's ripping in the hookless wheels, then ripping the um, tire over the bead, 
where all the fibers have to go vertical. In a hookless wheel, you cannot bend them over. There's not enough radius in this area here to allow the carbon to bend around. You need a hook for enough radius, just, and you can just do it on these. It's, it's a very cool process, it's not easy to do. Um, that's only been the last sort of four or five years been able to do that. And there's a very specific format that's involved in doing it and keeping that carbon behaved and stable in the molding process. But anyway, back to the blow off. So the tire rips over those fibers going vertically up and it rips the fibers apart. And then because the tire goes over, the air then shoots in a large void and that blows it off. You've got the violence of the tire ripping the carbon open and then the air instantly as that tire goes over, it's no longer escaping. It shoots inside that one area and it's such high pressure air that it blows the side off. That's what's, in my humble opinion, what's happening versus the theory that it's going through a hole in one of the assembly areas and then filling this whole void here and allowing it to blow off the side. That may be the case in some situations, but the, the, the violent tire blow off causing delamination with a shock air um, is I've seen that with my own eyes. I've seen it happen. So I'll show you how that happens, where the fibers go over and where they don't on some brands and just go vertically to the edge, even with the hook. Um, and yeah, you'll get an idea of how the impact resistance is improved by merely folding the unidirectional all the way from the side around the hook and into the valley section of the wheel. Um, yeah, so keep your eye out, probably in three or four weeks we'll, we'll do that burn test.